Hey guys, it's Wyatt. Tonight we're out here working on the C10 race truck a little bit more. Unfortunately, today is a bit of a repeat video from one that you've already seen on the channel, and that is painting this whole chassis. Uh, long story short, when I painted this chassis, I used PPG shop line epoxy primer, was I believe what it was. And usually I've had good luck with epoxy primer. It holds up really well. Don't have any issues with it as far as like coming in contact with chemicals or anything. And it usually does a pretty solid job. Well, unfortunately on this chassis, it did not hold up that well. It's the first time I've used that kind of primer. I've used epoxy primer on other stuff, but from different companies. So it's the first time I use the PPG stuff. And to be honest, I'm way less than impressed, especially for how expensive this stuff was. I think I sprayed a gallon. It took me a gallon to paint this whole chassis. And I think I spent probably, I don't know, $180 to $200 for that gallon of paint. And yeah, it's just not really gonna hold up the way that I want it to. So today we're gonna be setting up another paint booth and respraying the cold chassis. We're also gonna be spraying the rear axle and the inside of the cab. Now, for this go around, we're actually gonna be using some Eastwood single stage urethane paint. I've used their single stage paint before and I really liked it. If you guys remember the old blackish Civic on the channel, uh, that's what I actually used to paint that car and it turned out really good. So figured I'd just go with it again. Uh, it's really hard to beat, especially for the price. So hopefully it holds up a little bit better than this primer is. Uh, I guess the good news is this primer is going to work really good as a primer for the new paint. So all I got to do is do a quick sand on this whole chassis real quick with some 320 grit and then spray right over it and it should be good to go. But it is really annoying that we have to do this again. And I hate to film it for you guys again, but there's also going to be some added stuff in this video. So hopefully that makes up for it. Anyways, before we hop into setting up another paint booth and getting this thing prepped to shoot another layer of paint on it, I figured I'd show you guys some updates that I made since the last episode of working on this thing. So in the back here, we've made quite a bit of progress and the back suspension is actually 100% complete right now, minus the finishing nuts and bolts and what have you, uh, and paint obviously, but it is completely done. So we got the anti-roll bar completely welded, we got all of our end links welded and the tabs to the axle made. So that's not going anywhere. Thing works absolutely awesome. I'll show you guys that here in just a second. And then down below, I also got the lower kind of member made for the rear axle. Uh, got two gussets that go to the axle tubes. And then I kind of got sketched out welding to this cast iron housing. So that's why I added the other gussets here. But I do have two gussets down there that just go to the cast iron housing. I did weld pretty good. I preheated it and it did really well, but there are a few small cracks in there. But I figured since that cross member is responsible for holding the entire truck centered over the rear axle, uh, I might as well make it beefy and not have to worry about possibly one of those cracking and breaking and you know bending four link brackets or what have you. So kind of overkill, but it's done and I'm happy about it. So it's whatever. Today, we're gonna be getting some paint on that guy to finish it up and then the rear axle will be complete. So I'm really looking forward to getting that done. And then hopefully today we will also be getting to the cab. Now this thing's been buried for quite some time. So it's really cool to see it unburied, nothing sitting on top of it. And hopefully we can start getting this thing prepped because I would love to get this thing married onto this thing, this to there. As far as the cab goes, I need to get all these supports cut out. Uh, I put those in there to keep the cab square when I sent it off to have the body work done. I had a buddy of mine back in Colorado do all the body work and he knocked that out super quick. You guys remember it was in a video a while ago. His name is Sean. Thank you for knocking that out for me. But it's finally time to get that all taken care of and get this thing painted and then get it on the chassis. So with setting up another paint booth today to get this thing sprayed, hopefully we can utilize it also to get the cab in primer. Uh, we're gonna be painting the inside of it and I wanna just primer the whole outside of it so that it's kind of done. Uh, it's not gonna see any outside elements or anything. So hopefully the primer will hold up enough to when we're ready to paint it, we can just go ahead and do so. So that is the game plan for today's video. So without further ado, let's just go ahead, jump into a time lapse. I have got a ton of stuff to do because I literally have tomorrow to get this whole thing painted, axle, chassis, hopefully cab, all of it, because we have a ton of stuff going on this weekend. So let's go ahead and just jump right into this thing. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm not very enthused to do this. Anyways, let's go. All right guys, so I didn't film anything, but we're getting everything prepped to start laying some more paint. Like I said earlier, really not happy I have to do this, but some days you just gotta do it anyways. So. 
uh, diff all prepped. We got the truck all sanded down. Big thanks to Justin, John, and Ryan who's behind the camera. They came over and helped knock this thing out because we got big plans this weekend, so I have to have it painted tonight. So it's been a big, pretty big rush. Uh, but we're getting close. So we got the paint booth all set up again. Kind of different this time. Didn't bother taping off all the walls and stuff. Tried to get better ventilation. So it just pulls all the air out. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna start laying some paint here in just a minute. All the bare spots, I'm gonna lay some epoxy primer on it first, and then we're gonna hit it with some Eastwood single stage uh, black. It's like their rat rod satin black. So nice thing about single stage, don't have to clear it. It's pretty cheap paint, and it'll look just like the paint before, where it's kind of a really low gloss black, and it'll look really good. So hopefully, get that done. It'll be a little more impervious to chemicals, and hopefully, that's all the more we have to do to it. So. Earlier, I didn't show you guys, but we got the axle all prepped also. Um, ooh, that fell. <laughs> got some uh, trusses made on the axle here. I don't know if I showed you guys it outside of the truck, but you can see the new uh, wishbone mount. Got some nice gussets in here to keep everything straight, really hold the full link brackets in place, make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, yeah, like I said, just wiping it down with some lacquer thinner, then we're going to start laying some paint on this stuff. All right, got the chassis done. Brother, everything's blown off. Got it all wiped down. So we're gonna mix up some primer and hit all of the bare areas. So like these gussets here, these door bars and whatnot, or these bottom door bars, whatever you call them. Uh, so we'll hit those with some primer, epoxy primer, just to seal them because it is bare metal. And then once that's done, we've got like a 15 minute flash time between that and then we're gonna add the Eastwood single stage paint. It's like their rat rod satin black. So then we'll spray that on, probably reduce it down a little bit so it sprays out of the gun nice. And then this time, we are gonna narrow down the fan pattern and also reduce the volume of flow quite a bit. So no hopefully, oversprays? So hopefully we don't have overspray and hopefully we can use a lot less paint this time because yeah. last time it took a gallon of paint to do this thing and I've done a whole car with a gallon of paint. So Sheesh. <laughs> hopefully we can get that thing narrowed down and hopefully it sprays out a little bit nicer this time. We don't have to use as much paint on it. So, so what's different with uh, what you're doing now versus what you did before? So before we just used epoxy primer and long story short, I've used really cheap epoxy primer before and had really good luck with it. It's what I painted the whole engine with and it's chemical resistant, at least that stuff was, and it worked really good. It was like a hundred bucks for two gallons, the Eastwood epoxy primer stuff. Uh, this time I was impatient. I just bought it all from a local auto paint store it was like $200 for this stuff. It was PPG shop line epoxy black. And needless to say, freaking brake cleaner was breaking the paint down. So that's why we're going back over at this time. We're doing a single stage urethane paint. So this actually has, if it was a shiny paint, it would have the clear coat baked into it. This is like a matte finish. So it's got clear in it, but it's like a matte uh, satin finish. So it won't be really shiny, which I don't want anyways. Uh, and it'll be a lot more chemical resistant this time as well. So. Kind of a bummer the epoxy primer didn't work out because the whole truck was painted and ready to go. Uh, but I know for a fact this thing is probably going to blow up at some point and spray oil everywhere. And if I can't wipe it down with brake cleaner, it's going to be SOL, buddy. <laughs> so we got it. Uh, we got to make sure it's chemical resistant. So that's why we're going with the uh, the paint and repaint here. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start mixing up some epoxy primer and then get this thing shot.
got gold. I'm gonna spray some primer. I definitely should have mixed more, but whatever. It'll ride. So in the last couple of clips, you guys saw that I was just starting to get the chassis in some color. Uh, I was just about to lay down some primer on any of the bare spots of the chassis, just so that we had a good foundation for the new paint to stick. Uh, unfortunately, it was pretty late already. It was about 11 o'clock at night, so all my buddies took off. Uh, Ryan, John, and I believe Jeremy. Don't quote me on that. I know it starts with a J. Uh, I just met him that day, and I'm horrible with names. so. Thank you guys uh, to those three for coming over and helping get the truck sanded. There is no way in heck I would have got this thing done uh, in the sh very short time frame that I had without those guys' help. So huge thanks to them. I know you guys are watching this video, so appreciate you. Long story short, I didn't get finished with the painting process on this thing until 3 a.m. Uh, it was about 4 a.m. before I was in bed after cleaning up the gun and all the paint supplies. And then I got two hours of sleep before I had to get back up and go on a 12 hour road trip with Kyle. So yeah, it was a pretty rough weekend, I'm not gonna lie. But even all that wouldn't have been as bad as screwing up this brand new freaking paint, dude. Can you believe this shit right here? Literally two days, this thing has been with fresh paint and I already scratched the hell out of it. Let's go ahead, get everything thrown back onto the front of this truck real quick and then we will pick up from there. Uh, just so you guys can see it now. We'll do a little before shot. It is completely stripped out, and right now, you're gonna see it completely put together. I know, I know, that was a pretty horrible transition, but the front end is back together. We got everything uh, back in its place up front here. Got it sitting on the bump stops right now so that we can roll it. I don't think I showed you guys this yet, but I also added another plate in between our upper coil mount. Uh, this is just so that the brackets can't go forward and back, and it's also welded flat across this bottom here to the chassis. So hopefully that will give it a little bit more added strength when the coil is pushing up against it. So yeah, front end completely done. And as far as the rear end, this is how it will be when it is assembled for the final time. I'm sure it'll come back apart a time or two before the truck's done, but I did get it everything pretty much tightened up and mocked up how it's going to be. This ARB looks killer in black. I didn't know if I was gonna like it like that with the nice billet arms, but I kind of like the look of it all black, so yeah. If we take and use this jack and prop up just one side of this axle, without the ARB, this thing would allow it to flex and the axle would just sit like there and the suspension would take up the droop. But with this ARB, we're trying to limit that so that when the truck takes off, it doesn't actually rock to this back corner here. If you guys don't know what an ARB is, it's an anti-roll bar. It keeps the truck nice and flat when you go to take off. Uh, a lot of like, you know, you've probably seen them like the old G-Body cars, they do the G-Body shuffle. And when they launch, uh, the car will actually go like this and kind of roll really hard and lean onto the right rear tire. And some of them even do a three wheel motion. So what the anti-roll bar does is it counters that. So as the truck preloads that right rear corner, it'll actually suck down the left rear corner and kind of stabilize uh, the body movement when you go to launch these things. So this ARB is freaking massive. If we go ahead and jack up the axle on the complete left side here, we can actually see how this thing works. So 
So that is with the ARB in there. Uh, both tires are completely off of the ground. And as you can see, it's lifting this complete other side off of the ground while not allowing it to flex a whole lot. And that ARB is just transferring the energy evenly between the back of the chassis here. Anyways, that's enough about the chassis. Today's video focus was actually supposed to be about the cab until we got a little bit sidetracked with having to repaint this thing. So today we're gonna be trying to get the cab put over the chassis here. Uh, we need to go ahead and cut out all of these supports in here. I put these in when I sent the cab with my buddy Sean to have the rockers and everything done. Uh, he did a killer job with those, but that was just to kind of stiffen the cab up while it was in transport and kind of keep its shape. So yeah, let's go ahead and get those cut out and then we're gonna set it on the chassis here and hopefully make a very big cut in this back portion of the cab and get this thing slid over the cage. All right guys, we're getting pretty close. We have everything lined out and where we need to cut the back of this cab out. Really, I've been procrastinating on this just because it gives me anxiety looking at how much sheet metal we're gonna have to fix on this cab considering we have no floorboard, no firewall, and soon we're gonna have no back of the cab. So, is what it is, need to get it done so I can get it slid over the cage. Um, yeah, we're gonna break out the freaking cutting disc and get this thing notched out. So as far as the back goes, I'm just gonna do one cut here and one cut here that will allow it to slide over the frame rails perfectly. It's just wide enough to do that. And then once we get it set down on the chassis, I'll come in and make some really fine cuts right here to allow the down bar to come back through here. Uh, I don't wanna cut all of this out and have to re do a whole bunch of bodywork back here. So these cuts will just be nice and small and hopefully contour the bar really close so that we can just put a little rubber grommet in there and then have those sealed back up. So yeah, let's go ahead, break out the freaking grinder and get this back section cut out. Quick side note, I do have a bunch of marks everywhere inside of the cab so that I can measure it and make sure it's square. Uh, so as you can see, I've got them all numbered and I have a cheat sheet written down with triangulated measurements of the entire cab, both vertical and horizontal. So any alignment issues I may have, I can remedy by just checking that. So once the cab is on there and we start tacking it into place, I can make sure the cab itself is completely square. I did take all those measurements before I cut the floor and firewall out of it. So the cab might have been a little bit tweaked as it was. Um, it wasn't a wreck and it was assembled a long time ago. So I'm not shooting for it to be absolutely perfect, but it is nice to have all those measurements just for a ballpark. So yeah, let's go ahead, set up the time lapse and get this freaking thing cut out, dude. Ugh, not looking forward to it. So last night I got the back of the cab cut out and then today I got the chassis kind of taped up so that when we go ahead and slide this thing over it, hopefully we won't scratch the paint at all. My buddy Ryan is on his way over and we'll probably get Kyle out here too to kind of help set the cab on here. And then we're just gonna be setting it down on these little stands and hopefully kind of just mock it up into place. I'm still debating whether I wanna make it removable or not. So that's kind of the reason for this test fit. I still need to pull it back off so that we can paint the inside of the cab before it goes on. Just be a lot easier to do now before it's mounted. As far as making it removable or not, I'm still undecided. I do want to get the cab put over the chassis first, kind of see what we're working with before I make up my mind on that. Really, I don't see any huge reason that I should make it removable other than the fact that it would be easier to do that now than trying to remove it later for whatever reason if it is permanently mounted. Um, it wouldn't be super hard to make it removable, just a little bit more time consuming to do so. So yeah, we'll kind of make that decision once we get there. Uh, once Ryan shows up and Kyle comes out here, we're gonna get this thing laid over the chassis.
Well guys, I kind of had a big oof moment. As you just saw, we got the cab set over the chassis and it's looking freaking awesome, but I forgot to pick up the camera and film anything before we re-removed it. Looks really good, uh, really brought back some memories of when I first set out to build this truck. I had this vision in my head, and man, seeing the cab back on there after so long just kind of refreshed my mind on that image, and it's got me pumped to get this truck up and running. But before we get the cab on there for the final time, there's actually some more stuff I need to do to it. We are waiting on some paint to show up, either today or tomorrow, so that I can go ahead and primer the whole cab, and then paint the inside of it satin black to match the chassis. We also need to make a couple more uh, slits in some sheet metal, just trim it up a little bit to give us some extra room for the cab to sit down over the cage work. So once we get those couple things done and get the cab fully painted, we're actually going to be putting this thing on for the final time and I'm really looking forward to it. So let's go ahead, jump into a time lapse real quick, get that stuff knocked out so we can get this thing put over the chassis for the last freaking time. Let's go. Well, we were making some pretty good progress standing away on this thing, but old Ryan showed up with some teas, so we're gonna go relax in the pool for a while. Uh, it's like 95 outside right now. Yeah, it's a pretty nice day out. The pool's like 80? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Sunday afternoon, some tea action. That's much better than sanding this thing. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but I was actually motivated to work on it today, which doesn't happen often. What, what are the, you gonna have that? You gonna have yeah, that. you gonna have that. <laughs> So yeah, we, uh, we're getting sanded away. You guys saw in the time lapse, we were just using the Astro Tools little palm sander on all the big flat areas. Thing worked great. And then we were hand sanding the rest of it. I didn't film any of that. But uh, getting there, got a ton of sanding left to do to get all the nooks and crannies. Uh, also the paint showed up today. So we'll be able to prime this thing later this week when I have some more time to finish that up. But for right now, we're gonna go indulge in some teas and big chill in the pool. Make a good time? Yeah, so we'll... we'll <laughs> nice. And fucking end it. All right, guys, it's been a couple of days, but today we're trying to make great progress on the C10 cab. So earlier this week, I went to the paint supply store and got some stuff to make that happen. We got some lightweight Bondo, some more sandpaper, and also some new stuff for applying the Bondo since I left mine in Colorado. Along with the couple of areas I want to Bondo in just to make it look a little bit nicer, we also need to MIG weld in a couple of small pinholes. A little tip for you guys if you're working with thin sheet metal like a lot of these cabs and stuff are. Um, a lot of the times when you go to weld in a small pinhole like this guy that goes through the back of the sheet metal, it'll tend to want to actually just blow out the hole even bigger from the heat. So a quick tip to get around that is to find yourself a piece of copper. Any copper will work. Uh, usually a little bit thicker is better. It'll absorb heat better. Uh, but what this is is just some half inch copper tubing and hammered flat on the back side so you can use it to push up against the back of the weld. Uh, the two benefits this is going to give you is it actually helps absorb some of the heat so it won't be all transferred into the thin sheet metal and blow out the hole and it also works as a nice backing piece because the weld will not stick to the copper. So you can go ahead and just put that right behind your weld and it'll help keep the hole from just blowing out bigger when you go to tack that guy in. So we're going to go ahead pull out the old freaking Hobart MIG welder sitting over there in the corner and get these couple of spots filled in. And then we need to do the little bit of Bondo work, some more sanding. We got a little bit of rust up here we need to deal with. And then this thing's gonna be ready for freaking primer, dude. I'm excited and I'm ready for it to be done. Fast forward a couple of hours, got the cab completely prepped. We got those couple of places spot welded, uh, got a couple of other holes filled in, got the rest of this thing sanded and wire brushed down uh, to get rid of any of the rust and make sure we have the best prepped surface for our paint. The only problem with all that is it's looking like it's gonna rain outside. So we're not gonna be able to shoot this thing just yet. We're gonna do it in the morning. Hopefully the weather will be nice. It won't be very humid and we can get some color on this thing. But for tonight, what we're actually gonna do is take this chassis, push it outside. We're gonna roll it to the shop that's in back. I wanna weigh the truck as it sits right now just so we have a good idea of what the rolling chassis by itself weighs. Then we're gonna go ahead, put the engine and transmission in it, reweigh it so we have kind of an overall weight um figure it'll be pretty interesting to see kind of where we're at really no gain of doing it right now we will reweigh it once the truck is done so that i can get my final spring weight 
for the coilovers. But uh, yeah, for right now, I'm just kind of interested in what it's at. And also, I just want to throw the engine back in it so it's not taking up space out in the shop. So let's go ahead and get this thing pushed out there and see what we're working with. Well, the freaking battery died right as we were getting the truck out of the garage, but we got it out here in the shop. Shout out to Ryan, old minty fresh garages, E30 looking cool. But I uh, figure it's a good day the old John Deere gets to meet its brothers. You know, they're practically twins. Bunch of lawnmowers up in this bitch. You got all these lawnmowers in the one truck. In the one truck. America, boy. Yeah, we got our new green Honda Civic pulled into the shop here. Yeah, freaking looks right at home, dude. Yep. Probably Pretty sick. More torque than all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we got told uh, James Tall scales right here. We're gonna throw the truck on them, like I said, without the engine, and then we will put the engine in it. See where we're at. brother oh this thing is gonna be real heavy dude what is it 1800 1873 as it sits dang Big bro oof. i literally said 2873 <laughs> <laughs> remember we'll see dude that tranny, thousand pounds off <laughs> that transmission and engine i think's probably around 1300 so, so it's gonna be like we'll see pounds just that back in it i hope to god not Oh wait, no, that'd be only just like over 3,000. 3, yeah, which I can work with. I mean, that's the majority of the weight there. My goal for the truck, once it's done, is to be around 4,000 pounds, if not a touch lighter. So hopefully it's somewhat close to that. Otherwise we'll have to find some more places to lose weight, like cutting the frame rails out and redoing it. <clears throat> Rip. Anyways, that's not too bad, I guess. 1874, we'll see what it is with the transmission and engine in there. All right, got the engine and transmission set in there. Right now I'm measuring it with the Allison because we're gonna be running that for a little while, but we are gonna be going to a 4L ADE and getting rid of that dinosaur. So that will be at least 150 pound savings there, but I wanna know what it weighs right now. So getting the scale set back under this thing and hopefully she's not too big of a dinosaur, but I feel like she's gonna be a bit on the heavy side. Moment of truth. There it is. Sheesh. She a heavy girl, buddy. 3,000 pounds. 2980. It's kind of where I figured we would be though. I figure we have, I don't know, probably another 1,000 pounds worth of stuff to put on it. So that would be complete said and done. Hopefully right around 4,000 pounds. 4,400 once why it's in there on the 4, scales. 4,400 the in it. All right, we'll see about that. There's a good okay. chance I'm gonna get a fiberglass front clip for it too before we freaking get this thing completed so that'll be a good weight savings off the nose but it's getting there she uh she a heavy girl so it's where we're sitting good to know where we're at right now hopefully it doesn't go too much over that in the future 4400 oh. i'm gonna go 4100 with me in it all said and done we'll see hopefully lighter hopefully lighter but that's gonna be my guess it's 4100 to 4200 we out here, boy. Pulling through the wet grass and all. John Dirte, baby. Oh, she's slowing down. Got the wheels turned. With any luck, the old tractor will pull her. Hey, hold on there. Thing ain't exactly the easiest to steer. I'll tell you that. God dang, it's hot, dude. Freaking Florida heat and humidity kicking this fat boy's ass. Anyways, we got the truck back in the garage. This thing is a pain to steer with that engine up front just because it's so heavy. The truck is a little bit of a boat anchor, not gonna lie to you guys. Um, I, I thoroughly knew it was gonna be this heavy going into it. Uh, I just, after seeing the number, I'm like, damn it, I wish it was lighter. Now I'm thinking of all the things I could do to make it lighter. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier, we are definitely going to be going to a 4L ADE at some point in this truck, hopefully sooner than later. I already have the transmission. It's already mildly built. 
Might put it in here, see what it does, and then blow it up. Might have it gone through before I do it. I'm not quite sure yet, but the plans are 4L80E, still four wheel drive. And then also at some point, I wanna get rid of the factory 11.5 inch AAM rear axle. That thing is a freaking boat anchor. It weighs like 550 pounds and you know, it's, it is strong, don't get me wrong, but it's super heavy and I don't need it to be that heavy. I'm gonna be doing a Ford nine inch in the back of this truck at some point. It probably won't be this season or this year per se, but at some point it will be getting a nine inch to drop a ton of weight back there. And then we may also consider doing some stuff like getting rid of the four wheel drive at some point if we really want to drop some weight and the truck could be set up to be a two wheel drive truck. It is four linked and it's got the adjustability to front half pretty well being a two wheel drive truck. So if we're really trying to get rid of a bunch of weight and go that route, that is something we could always do in the future. Obviously we're gonna keep four wheel drive for now just for the wow factor of it. Uh, I like four wheel drive. It's kind of cool doing a four wheel drive burnout. So that's gonna stay for now, but it is something that we could consider in the future if we need to get this thing lighter. Uh, but yeah, truck's in the garage here. I'm gonna get this freaking door shut down and go inside and enjoy the AC for a minute in the morning. We're gonna get this cab pulled outside. Like I said, it is completely ready for paint. All we're gonna have to do is wipe it down and start shooting the thing. All right guys, it's the next morning. Don't mind the bro tank. This is part of my 4th of July outfit, but it's freaking hot this morning. So I'm trying to get as naked as possible without embarrassing myself. So here we are. We got the cab out here all set up, ready to paint. I already went ahead and got it all wiped down with alcohol, isopropylene alcohol. Uh, that's what I prefer to use on the final wipe down because it won't eat into the previous paint but it also removes grease and grime really well so that's all done went ahead and got it blown off as well we got our astro tools uh, water separator hooked up to the air compressor over there in the corner so we're ready to start spraying this thing i'm going to go ahead and start mixing up the paint throw the camera on the tripod and we're going to lay down our first coat of primer on this thing it is really hot and really humid this morning so i've never really painted in a humid environment so i'm really hoping it doesn't just go to shit. Uh, I've read a bunch of stuff online about kind of precautions to take when spraying when it's humid. So hopefully we have all our bases covered today and hopefully the paint lays down smooth and doesn't do anything wonky. But uh, fixing to find out here in just a second. So let's go ahead, jump into mixing this paint and then uh, laying it down on the cab here. Right, guys we're making great progress on getting the cab painted we got the whole thing in primer i've got about three coats on this thing so gonna call it good there as far as the primer goes it definitely highlighted some of the spots we're gonna have to body work a little bit more uh, just little dents and random things that have accumulated over the years of this truck being in existence so it's good that we got that on there kind of highlight all of those and also it's kind of weird i've never had to bury uh, Bondo kind of like I did in this kind of weird. It didn't want to get covered up by the primer So that's why I put three coats on the entire cab uh, It'll be covered up easy enough with color But it's just kind of weird that the primer didn't cover it up as easily as I thought it was going to so anyways Primer is good to go next up. We're gonna start spraying the inside of the cab black. We're gonna be using the Eastwood single stage uh, Rat rod satin black. It's the same stuff that we painted the chassis with uh, we're only going to be painting the inside of the cab. The outside of the cab still needs body worked and I will paint it once the truck is complete. I only primed it right now to keep any more rust from forming. So that's how it's going to sit for now. So anyways, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get this thing sprayed with the black paint. It's supposed to rain here in about two hours. So I want to get it done and back in the garage before that happens. So yeah, back on the tripod, you guys go. Let's get this knocked out.
We got lucky and completed the cab just in the nick of time. I just got it moved back in here into the shop and it just started raining outside. So perfect timing on getting that thing done. Uh, I didn't film the final part of it there in the time lapse of applying more than one coat of the black, but we did do three coats of that rat rod satin black on the inside of this cab. It's looking really good um, overall. It's not perfect, but it didn't need to be. So like on the primer, you can see up on the roof that it's got some streaks in it, but that's all gonna get sanded off anyways. I only did that to prevent this from rusting anymore. So we'll get rid of that when we go to do the final paint on this cab. And then another thing, I think I mentioned it earlier, how it would not cover up this primer. Kind of weird, and you can still see it there. And that's with three coats of primer over that spot of Bondo. So not really sure what's going on with that. I'm sure color would cover that up just fine, but I'm still kind of surprised that the epoxy primer didn't cover that up. If you're a paint guru and you know what happened, leave a comment down below. I always love learning about stuff like that. So anyways, the cab is done um, on the inside. I can show you it, but it's pretty dark and we all know how GoPros do with low light, not the greatest. So yeah, inside of it is completely black. Turned out really good, really nice surface finish, nice and smooth. The paint laid out nice and flat. Uh, the only issue is on the upper inside of the roof with that HVPL gun. It's really hard to spray the inside of this roof because you have the gun pointed so far back and since it's gravity feed, it actually won't let the paint run into the gun. So the roof ain't great, but it's gonna be fine. You're never gonna see it. Uh, there is just a couple of streaks and then you can see right where I ran out of paint in the middle there. So uh, it is what it is. I'm not really worried about it. Like I said, you're never gonna see it. So we're just gonna slap it on the chassis, the way it sits. And if it becomes a problem in the future, I could always do like a little bit of roll on paint or something if it really got to bothering me. But what do we say? You're gonna have that on these big jobs. So yeah. So we're gonna leave off for today. I appreciate you guys watching. Leave a like and a comment down below. As always, I love hearing from you guys down in the comment section. And we will see you in the next video, which is hopefully fairly soon, not three months from now. But you never know, really. Honestly, like with my channel, you don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.